You're looking at a mimosa tree, also known as a silkwood tree. And you get to see its glory at 10 minutes till 6 a.m. at the end of June 2018. I love to watch this tree in the morning as the sun comes up from over there and the light refracts off the blossoms. It's absolutely glorious. Reminds me of a Thomas Kincaid painting. Here's a close-up of the blossoms. This is why it's often referred to as a silk tree. They've got pink tops, white bottoms, and a silky texture. They look like silk. Kind of looks like cotton through the camera, but in real life it's more of a silk type texture. The tree is indigenous to East Asia, uh, up around the Iran area, throughout Persia, and then it moves over through mainland uh, Asia, through China, and then down through South Asia. I have this, well there's two, there's a smaller one here, and then there's this giant one here that's probably close to 40 feet tall, and they get as much as 50 feet tall. I'm going to show you a couple more I have up here. We have several. They seed really well, which I don't mind because as you can see they're very beautiful. They're considered an invasive species because they do reproduce so quickly once they take root in an area. Oh, I was grabbing my chair and my kitty cat was in my chair. Uh, I brought a chair down here to enjoy this view. <clears throat> The blossoms on this mimosa tree fall off at night and they collect on the pond up there, at the head of the pond. We have a small stream that flows into the pond right there. And these mimosa blossoms just gather on the water all night when the sun's down and they just float there. It's like little balls of silk or pink cotton candy on the water. And it's absolutely beautiful. When the sun does come up, oh, about an hour or so after it's been up and it's starting to put off a lot of heat and things are warming up out here, these blossoms will wither and sink beneath the water's surface. And so you won't see them there for the rest of the day. But when the sun goes down below the western horizon there, the blossoms start gathering again on the pond for the next morning's beautiful scene. Chinese medicinal practitioners use the young leaves of the mimosa and the bark for medicinal purposes. Uh, according to Wikipedia, it, uh, it's good for treatment of several uh, mood issues such as depression, anxiety. But don't go out and start eating mimosa leaves just because you heard me say that. Uh, they are poisonous and like most plants that are used for medicinal purposes, if you don't know how to prepare them and if you don't know what you're doing, you can get yourself hurt or killed. Mimosas thrive in droughtish type weather. And as you know, Persia is a very arid region. So it makes sense. The trees were introduced to Europe in the mid 1700s by travelers to the Persian area. He thought the tree was beautiful, took it back to Europe, and then of course it made its way to the United States. We're here in Virginia where the trees thrive. Just because they thrive in arid regions doesn't mean that they don't do well when they get plenty of moisture. As a matter of fact, they do better when they get plenty of moisture. If I were to walk up into the woods right there, I would find all these little baby mimosa trees about a foot tall. We're actually going to dig some up and pot them up so we can put them other places around our homestead where we think they'd look good and maybe give some to friends or whatnot. So I hope you learned a thing or two about the beautiful mimosa silk tree by watching this video. Thank you for sharing my favorite time of day with me early morning outside of my homestead taking in its glorious beauty. And it would mean a lot to me if you subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you next time from Homesteading Off the Grid.